Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making focaccia, so let's get started. And thanks to Optimum for sponsoring a portion of this video. Into a large mixing bowl, I'm adding two cups or 480 milliliters of warm water. It's like 110, 112 degrees. I'm gonna stir in a tablespoon of honey, measuring it out like that, and one package of active dry yeast. Add that right in. Stir this up, mostly for the sake of getting that honey mixed in. And we're gonna set this aside for a few minutes until it's nice and foamy. Our yeast is nice and foamy. That beautiful texture is like clouds in a bowl. And yes, I love the smell of yeast. It's so good. Right now we're adding 600 grams or five cups of all-purpose flour right into the mix. Homemade focaccia is one of my favorite things focaccia. to make. <laughs> what? You know it's focaccia, right? Oh, focaccia. 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 What would I do with that, Brian? Flakasha is so easy to make. There's no kneading. It's just like this loose, bubbly, beautiful bread. Oh, okay. Okay. And we're also adding one tablespoon of salt. Seems like a lot, but it's not. Now the scale is all done. We're just gonna mix this together by hand until it comes together in a very wet dough. Like, Oh my gosh. One thing I've realized from developing like a ton of bread recipes is that the bread we buy at stores isn't fresh, it's stale. Having homemade focaccia is so delicious. I don't think you'll ever go back. And it's really fun to make too. Okay, it's looking less shaggy and more cohesive. Okay. Four tablespoons of olive oil. The secret to this delicious bread is a lot of olive oil. It makes it so amazing. Okay, swish it around the sides. Side. There's only one side to a hemisphere. And now we're gonna plop this wet, easy, amazing dough right into the olive oil. Turn it over once just so it's all coated in olive oil. And now, this is gonna go to bed overnight. You could start this in the morning and finish it in the evening, but for those big, nice, airy flakasha bubbles, it needs to rest for a young, young time. So cover it up, pop it into the fridge, and we'll see you tomorrow. Didn't say nothing. <laughs> this portion of the video is sponsored by Optimum. Brian and I love living out here on Hedge Hill Farm. Our bees are making fresh honey, which is delicious and the kids enjoy. The kids pick fresh vegetables all the time. They hang out with Bobo and Charlie, all the goats. We have apple and pear trees. It's just amazing. But we couldn't work from home and live out here if it wasn't for a really fast and stable internet connection. Brian can be streaming 4K videos. The boys might be FaceTiming with grandma. All the while, my computer is uploading files for a preppy kitchen, and it's working seamlessly thanks to Optimum and that Wi-Fi 6 technology. If you don't know about Wi-Fi 6, it's a total game changer because you can have so many more devices on your internet connection at the same time. It's not gonna kick you off if you have an 11th person there. Optimum just launched Optimum Fiber. They're 100% fiber optic network with equal upload and download speeds. So now you can stream faster than ever with less lag. Compared to their new smart Wi-Fi 6 technology, you'll get a faster and greater whole home Wi-Fi connection throughout your home. Now Brian and I can stay connected on multiple devices and I can upload my 4K Preppy Kitchen videos in a snap. They also help keep you safe online with built-in internet security at no extra cost. Check out Optimum.com for more and let's get back to baking. Thanks again to Optimum for sponsoring this portion of the video. Another day, another Blue Gingham shirt. Take a look at this dough. It is a monster, and there's one step before we go on to the next step. We're gonna lightly oil your fingers. A lot of olive oil in this recipe. Mmm, moisturizing. Okay, now lift up from the bottom, and we're gonna fold this over. Quarter turn, fold it over again. Quarter turn, fold it over again, and one final quarter turn, and one final fold. There we go. 
That's all the kneading we're doing, by the way. There's nothing else. Our dough and it's ready to either plop into one giant pan or, if you're like me, divide and bake into two pans. So divide your dough equally or equally-ish, not a big deal. It's much easier with a bench scraper, but I don't want to get all this olive oil on my counter. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to use a nine inch round and a quarter sheet pan for this. You could do one larger sheet pan if you wanted as well. One tablespoon of olive oil in each pan. Give it a brush just so it has a nice even coverage. You could use your fingers if you want since they're completely covered in oil at this point. I know from personal experience, this quarter sheet pan is mega sticky, so I'm giving it a little bit of extra oil. I've gotten so spoiled with the nonstick coatings in all my pans. Didn't appreciate them. Okay, now take one piece of focaccia, put it right there. Take the other piece, I'm like collecting all this olive oil so it doesn't go to waste, and place it on your other pan. This dough's been resting for a long time, but we gave it those folds and it wants to stretch or like pull back into place. So we're gonna be gentle with it and give it some time. Gently pull it apart with your fingers. And like that's as much as it wants to pull apart right now. We're gonna set that aside. <laughs> Next one. Gently pull this apart like that. That's as far as it wants to go. You'll see it springing back if I pull it more. These are both gonna rest for about half an hour in my warming drawer or a nice cozy place. And then we're gonna stretch them again. They need a couple stretches and rests until you can successfully bring them out onto the edge of the pan and they're ready to go. It takes a little bit of time, but you're gonna be rewarded with the most amazing focaccia ever and realize that all the stuff you bought before was just like a day old and not cool. Into the warming drawer. 30 minutes later, we're just gonna give our focaccia another stretch. So stretch it out. You'll see it bounce back so we know we have another stretch left in here. Back into the warming drawer. And this is why we were so gentle with this dough so it can get really airy and delicious. Those are gonna be amazing. This is just about ready. I'm gonna give this 20 more minutes before I get to dimpling, so one more rest. Our focaccia is out of the warming drawer and it's full of these amazing bubbles. Our final step, besides preheating your oven to 450, is to top it off with two tablespoons of olive oil, just like that. Use your clean fingers, which are also gonna oil up just a little bit, <laughs> to spread that over the top. This is amazing. And now, with your clean fingers, you're gonna aggressively dimple the top. So just go ahead and pop those fingers in there this creates part of that amazing texture and helps it cook evenly. Now we're gonna sprinkle the top with some flaked salt, optional but delicious, and any fresh herbs you'd like. So you can use thyme. I'm having some fresh rosemary from the garden, just sprinkle on top. Big, beautiful pieces of rosemary. This will blacken up a bit. Any green you put on top will blacken up. So if you want it to be beautiful and green, just put it on right after the bake. I don't mind the dark color though, and it infuses your dough with a lot of delicious flavor. These are going into the oven 450 for 20 to 25 minutes or until the top and sides are golden brown and delicious. Into the oven. Once your focaccia is nice and golden, let it cool for just a minute before transferring to a wire rack so it can stay really crispy on the outside. This is basically fried in olive oil, so it's crispy on the outside, pillowy soft on the inside, and all the way through amazing. That is perfection, plain with nothing added to it. It's delicious. Hope you get a chance to make this recipe and I'll see you in the next video. If you like my videos, check out my bread playlist.